Hey there, my name is Cameron, better known as Venus Theory, and welcome back to the Mixcraft YouTube channel. Have you ever walked into your studio and started working on a track and you decide to bring in some loops that you downloaded or maybe loops that your friend or collaborator sent you, but they're totally out of time with your session, so you completely lose the groove? Then today, you're in luck, because we're going to be talking about the sacred art of beat matching inside of Mixcraft. We're going to be taking two loops from horribly out of time monstrosities to perfectly in time, crispity, crunchity goodness. So let's hop into Mixcraft and get started. Here we are in Mixcraft, and I started off a session for like a drum and bass sort of thing. And right now it sounds like this. Nothing too fancy or amazing, but I wanted to fill this out with a couple of extra layered samples. So I dug through my sample folder and found a drum break and a shaker loop. The drum break loop sounds like this. So, good stuff. The shaker loop, on the other hand, sounds like this. There are two problems here, though. If we pull these back into the context of the session, they're different lengths, and they're both totally out of time, and what's worse, I have no idea what tempo these are in. So, by dragging these into my session, I took what was a pretty okay starting point and turned it into a complete disaster. Now, while I'm all for avant-garde experimental things, this is, uh, this is just not going to work for me. So we're going to talk about two different ways to beat match loops for your projects. First up, let's take a look at the easier example, which would be the shaker break here. The thing with the shaker break is it starts exactly on the one, and in like 99% of cases with professionally released sample packs and loop libraries, they're going to start on the one or the downbeat. So in 4-4, four, four, for instance, if we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, these loops are going to start exactly on the one, and it's just a matter of finding the tempo to shrink them to fit into the project. Normally with samples, you would see the file name followed by a tempo label followed by a key or note label if it's something that's melodic. In this case though, it just says shaker break, so I have no idea where to begin to match this to the tempo. The easiest way to match this in Mixcraft though is to simply hold down the control key and click and drag it to size to a region, in this case four bars. So by taking that, because it does start exactly on the one where it should start, we've taken it from totally out of time to fitting perfectly in tempo with this loop. Now, to make it a bit more clicky and upbeat and drum and bassy, I'm just going to resize this once more and shrink it down to only two bars, and now we've got a nice upbeat shaker loop. When it comes to beat matching in your projects, one thing to keep in mind is that it's better to shrink loops than it is to expand them, because if we take this loop and we expand it all the way out here, it's going to start to get a little bit gross and artifacty. It's kind of like resizing a picture in a photo editing program. We can shrink a picture and it'll still look fine, but if we took a tiny picture and blew it up really big, there's not enough information there and it just starts to look a little weird, and audio is much the same way. It's easy to shrink something because we're not adding any information that's not there. If we expand it though, we're trying to add information that doesn't exist, and it can sometimes cause some undesired artifacts. However, sometimes that can be kind of cool, so extreme time stretching is something to play around with. With the shaker loop done, now it's time to move on to this drum loop, which is going to be a little more advanced, but we're going to walk through it step by step. There are a couple problems with this loop. One, I have no idea what tempo it's in. Two, it's got other stuff in it that I don't want there. And three, it doesn't start exactly on the one. If we listen carefully to the loop here... The start there isn't exactly on the one. That's starting on like the... Maybe like the two and a half or something like that, which is just not going to work. So first up, we need to zoom in and find the downbeat. So it sounds like it's when that first kick drum comes in. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Okay, so that's going to work. To do this, we need to zoom in and we're going to unsync from the grid. So I'm going to hit the tilde A key and find that first kick drum, which I believe is right about here. Cool. Now we'll use control T on the keyboard to split this, delete the unneeded stuff. Now we'll sync this back up to 16th notes by pressing the five key on the keyboard, 
bring it back, and now we should be able to listen to this and have it start on the one. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Cool. Now we've got to get rid of the other stuff we don't want here. So let's find a good point to cut this off. Let's find maybe a couple downbeats down. One, two, three, four, one. I think we'll cut it right about here. So let's zoom in once again, unsync this with the tilde key and find right where that kick drum starts, right there. Control T to split it, and now we'll delete that. Now we've got a loop and it should just go through a couple bars and then stop. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Cool. Now we can shrink this down the same way we did with the shaker loop. So let's hold Control, get the resize handles and shrink this down to be two bars. Let's make sure we're snapping to that grid once again. Hit the five key there to snap to sixteenths. Now we should be able to play this back and listen with the metronome and everything should be in time. Cool. From here it would just be a matter of chopping this loop up a little bit. There's a little bit of a vocal line. We can hear some kind of ad libs and stuff going on in there. So I could just go through and find different kick drums like this one here. Then we could delete this first hit that has that vocal line in it. With that deleted, we could paste in this kick. Sounds like there's some talking here. So let's grab this snare drum here, copy that over, delete the talking and the chatter right around there, paste it in. And now we've got a much cleaner loop to work with. Cool. With that, we could highlight all this, Control W, merge it to a new clip, and then we can start duplicating this out in order to create the final product. With those two techniques, we've now taken two totally unsynced and random loops and perfectly synced them up with our project here. Listen with the metronome. Now we can unsolo this, bring it all back together in context, and see what we've got. And we're done. Beat matching doesn't have to be a total and complete mystery. Mixcraft has all the tools built in that you need to take a loop from totally out of sync to perfectly in sync with your project every single time. And with these two techniques, you'll be able to take any loop out there and set it up to work perfectly with your project. That wraps everything up for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And of course, I hope this inspires you to get out there and make something awesome. For more information on Mixcraft or to try it for yourself today, you can head over to acoustica.com.